everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a gel press video as part of the gel press collab with Crafty Michelle and all of the other participants will be linked in the description box below. Um, so when you finish watching my video please go and check out theirs. So for my first video I thought I would kind of do like a gel plate 101, <laughs> um, although there's not going to be 101 things, that would be a long video. But um, yeah, just some like basic principles, how to get started and what to do. So I'm going to focus mainly on paint and uh, you can use ink on your um, gel plate but I will, um, as I go through I'll explain the differences and yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I'm picking paint today, and most of the paints I am picking are acrylics. You can get different types of acrylics with different uh, opacity levels, uh, but I'm basically using opaque medium today um, for the most part. So to get started, you have to think about building your print in layers and each layer that you build you will need to let dry in between if you want to do the technique where you just do a one pull print. Um, the other option you can do is to make each layer at a time and then use your gel plate like a stamp and just keep adding layers until you're happy with them. And that's something that I tend to do with a smaller plate and um, yeah, perhaps I can show you an example of that at some point. I don't usually clean my plates very well because I like all the grungy texture. Um, so I just kind of leave it there. But if you like to have a clean start, you can start off with a clean plate. To clean them, I pretty much use soap and water or a baby wipe. Although I'm trying to get away from baby wipes because um, they're not very good from the environment. But occasionally you have to bust one out. Okay, so... I want to start with the layer that I want to be on top of my print, so I'm starting from the foreground and working my way backwards, which is, sounds counterintuitive, but actually it really helps you uh, layer up your print. So for example, here is what I did earlier, and I actually put my stencil down on the gel plate and put the orange layer down first, and then I went over the top the whole, of the whole plate with yellow, and I got this design. And this one, I did the green layer first, and then I went over with gold, which is why you see some gold um, in the background peeking through. Okay, so hopefully that will give you a rough idea where you're hidden. And you only need a tiny, tiny amount of paint on the gel press to get what you need and this is also really helpful when you are doing various layers because um, the thinner the paint the less time it takes to dry which is great. Now I don't recommend heat setting anything because you will probably melt your plate. So that's my first layer and I will come back when it's dry and do the next layer. Okay, so that layer is now dried and I'm just going to mix up some paint because I'd quite like a light turquoise colour for my next layer. And I'm going to put this on the plate directly using a palette knife I think. Um, and if you're going to do that make sure you use a plastic one because the metal ones could damage your plate. And I like to do this because it means I don't need quite so many paints in my studio and it means I get to use them all up. So our next one I'm going to use is probably this doily pattern. Yeah, I think that would be pretty. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put that there. And put a bit on. Now because this stencil is quite thick, it might take a bit longer to dry, 
Um, I will brayer this after the fact, it's just a bit easier to get it on the plate with my palette knife. and avoid going outside of the design with the palette knife. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, that looks good. If you want to, you can have some scrap paper to roll off your um, with sorry I've got brain fog today can't remember words for things and um, the other thing you can do is reuse this on another gel plate so I've got some that I've got here um, that I've started other designs on so you can press your design onto another plate and get a positive image that looks cool. Uh, let's go for this one. That looks neat. And you can turn it over and see the other side if you want to get an idea of what you're building up. I would quite like to buy another big gel plate to be honest. Okay, so now you need to let that layer dry again and in the meantime make sure that you're washing your tools because um, otherwise you're going to end up with um, wrecked tools. I know some people leave their um, stencils but because I use my stencils for more than one thing I need to keep them clean. So I'm going to go do that now and we're going to let it wait and I'll to dry and I'll come back. Okay, so the layer with the stencil just dried and while I was um, off camera I dabbed some just fingerprint spudges on and I thought that would add some cool texture. So now we're going to pull a print and the most important thing to do when pulling a print is make sure that because these layers are dried you need to put um, a layer of paint on the background which will kind of stick to the dried layers and help you pull it off and you also need to leave it there for a bit longer than you would if you were just straight pulling so I'm gonna grab a piece of printer paper and get ready to pull so I've just mix up some baby blue color and I'm gonna just roll the whole background you can keep building layers as long as you want. Um, I thought I'd, for the sake of the video I'd keep it pretty simple. Um, see how it goes. Now if you start to pull it and you see that you haven't had all of the layers come up then um, it just means you need to leave it a bit longer. Good layer of paint on there. I'm just trying to get rid of any brayer marks. I don't really want those to show up in my print. Okay, and now I'm going to pull the print. And this is a slightly thicker copy of paper. So I think it needs to sit for about five minutes and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to give this one a pull and see how it goes. Now it's probably not going to be a clean pull because that um, stencil was quite thick but I'm going to give it a go anyway. And if it leaves some behind on the plate then it doesn't matter. I will just get it on another pull. And the trick is to go diagonally and slowly because it's got lots and lots ow, lots of layers to pull up. Sorry, I got a cut on my finger. I had to take my blaster off. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is always the nerve wracking bit. That's 
cool. So you can see the print that we got there with that fun texture. If I was going to do this again, I think I would have a contrasting colour in the background because you can't really see this um, turquoise colour very well. But I do really like it still and I will use it for something. And then I have this little bit of texture left so the next time I pull a print I will get that fun texture. And just to show you some of the other prints I did um, off camera. So I pressed the stencil down on my small blocks and that's what they came out as. That was really fun. This one I added um, some more texture after the fact because I just wanted to make it um, a bit more contrasty. And to do that I literally just got my plate, added a stencil and some texture and then used it as a stamp and then just added it on to an existing print. So I love these small ones for like stamping, they're really fun for that. Um, then I pulled a second print, which was these two, and I added some pale blue in the background. I really like this one. Um, this one I added some white texture, because there wasn't much left on it, and then I did the blue in the background. Um, so that was my second generation. And then I just messed around and did another one, which was this little square. So if you have multiple gel presses, it's really fun to um, keep them nearby and just reuse texture, basically. Now, if you were working with um, ink, then obviously it's translucent, so you don't have to work in the same order. However, I personally still do because um, it, it helps me get in the same habit and also um, as ink dries they don't mix together so it means I can play with more colour. So for example, normally I would only stick with warm or cool colours on a plate but if I wanted to do say blue which is a cool colour and orange on the same plate then allowing the layers to dry in between means that they don't mix together and make brown. So this technique is really versatile. Um, it does take more time because you have to wait for the layers to dry in between but I personally feel like it's worth the waiting time because um, you get that crisp layer preserved for each one and obviously like I just did two or three layers today but you can do as many or as little as you want and yeah so I hope you guys learnt something and that you will give this a go because it's so much fun and I will see you in the next video bye